Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guest today is Steve Shanley, uh, back for uh, uh, the penultimate week of Cedar Rapids Municipal Band. Can't penultimate. Thank you for using that term correctly, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Second to last. Second to last. Yeah, well, well I, I... Not I, the greatest, <laughs> not the final... Second to last. <laughs> well, and of course, I missed out last week. We got so busy talking with uh, Slayton and John, I did not say the anti-penultimate, which is two from the end. That one I did not yeah, know. I learned I'm, that fairly recently myself. I'm going to start using yeah. that one. I love it. But not the anti-penultimate. Not the anti. The penultimate. The penultimate. Yes. And uh, it is the penultimate, but in some ways also the ultimate in that many new things this week okay including so this is our first time that we have planned to have both concerts indoors so in the past we would occasionally on perhaps the patriotic on the fourth of july if we ended up getting enough notice that there was going to be air quality alert or heat index we would move it indoors but that is usually pretty difficult to do at the last minute and when we uh, did that a few years ago, someone said, could we please maybe just have some indoor concerts? And we thought, why not? So we are going to have uh, Wednesday at the Washington High School Auditorium and Sunday at Kirkwood's Ballantine Auditorium, both at 730. And this is cool for a number of reasons. Air conditioning, toilets, indoor plumbing. No chance that it's going to get, well, you know, I say no chance it's going to get canceled and then we'll, you know, have a hurricane or something. But in theory, very low likelihood that it's going to get canceled. So those are some of the logistical aspects that our audience is going to like. But then from a musical standpoint, this allows us to play some material that we otherwise would normally not be able to play outdoors because either the acoustics don't work or outdoors on our stage we do not have access to piano and to marimba and vibraphone which are some big cool percussion instruments that frankly most band composers are writing for these days so oftentimes i'll hear a great piece of music and think uh the marimba and vibraphone parts are too important we can't program that so we've got piano, we've got marimba, we've got vibraphone, we are playing indoors. Also, because we are playing indoors, that is much easier for our musicians. And one thing, I, I try not to belabor the point with the audience, but playing outdoors in the summer on especially woodwind and brass instruments, that is really challenging when we're talking about the heat and the humidity. And so I try and take that into account when I'm programming repertoire that I don't do too much that is too taxing or too difficult. Indoors, that means we can play things like the original Star Wars main title. Not a simplified arrangement of it, but like the, it's going to sound like the London Symphony. We played this for the Iowa Bandmasters Association conference back in May. The, wasn't was, this the one that got the standing ovation? It got the standing in the ovation of the show? in the middle, yes. And so, uh, and that that's the type of thing that I would not probably program outdoors. It also has some important keyboard, percussion, piano parts in it as well. So we get to do the grown up version of Star Wars. So that's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, and then probably the most important new great ultimate thing we're doing this week, Taylor Swift medley. <laughs> I went online uh, a few weeks ago and I thought, okay, you know, I've got kind of my same, my same pieces that I've been using for the, for the children and uh, I need to. I need to vary it up a little bit. So I bought a couple of new ones. And as I was scrolling through, I saw, oh, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift and, for concert band. And you know what? I don't, I, I am not a Taylor Swift hater. I think she's wonderful. She's a great performer. I think she's a great songwriter. So uh, I'm excited to share some of her music. Now, if you ask me what songs are in the medley, I'm not so much of a fan that I could actually answer that question for you. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure that any Taylor Swift fans will instantly recognize songs the songs you will that we know. have. Yes, songs well, you'll know. Well, let's talk about that for just a minute, yeah. because uh, you know, as a you know, as a, as a composer and arranger yourself, and of course, there's always some translation mm -hmm. going into concert band and things like that. Uh, but you know, is Taylor a good songwriter? Yes, and this is an excellent question. There are a few 
really cool pieces of music out there that just simply don't work for concert band. And one of them, I'll be real honest, and I've tried it a couple of times a couple of different ways with the band, is music from Hamilton. And I mean, it kind of works, but really what makes that so special is the text. And when you lose the text and all you have are the harmonies and the melodies, those need to be pretty interesting to work without the text. And some of Lin-Manuel Miranda's stuff totally works that way. You know, Mo- Moana is wonderful. That works without the, without the lyrics. But uh, most of Hamilton doesn't. And there are other pop artists and, and songs that when you put them into a medley where all of a sudden the words are taken out and we just have the melody, just the harmony, we see, okay, does this stand on its own without the without the text? And I think Taylor's mm-hmm. stuff yeah. does. Her, her, her melodic lines are so strong. They and, really are. And, and it's like her... Her melodic lines, to me, are much like what we try to teach our jazz students for a good solo, where you want it to be pretty predictable for 70, 80 percent of the time, that a good solo is one that you're listening to and you kind of know where it's going to go, but then 20 percent of the time it goes someplace that you weren't expecting. So it's not unpredictable all the time. But it's not so predictable all the time either. And I have noticed that about her writing where the the intro starts. I'm like, okay, yep, this is the, oh, oh, that's different. That's a little, that's pretty cool. That's her own little take on things. And that all translates real well into the concert band. So Star Wars, Taylor Swift, what else do we have to look forward to? Uh, we've got another piece that we performed at the Iowa Bandmasters Association conference called Of Endless Miles and Empty Rafts by kind of an upcoming composer, Michelle Fernandez, who was actually hired to teach the uh, Allstate Jazz Band at uh, the Iowa Bandmasters Association conference. She was a renowned jazz educator and, and jazz composer and has started doing more and more concert band work. And so this is very cool. Another reason program I'm programming it this week because we've got all of those percussionists. And she wrote, um, it, it's Cuban. And I would say a lot of times concert band composers will try to write something ethnic sounding. And they'll take a little bit from Brazil and a little bit from West Africa and a little bit from Cuba. And when I got this score, I said... This person really knows this stuff. Like, this is straight up Cuban. Like, Wawanko, she's using the Roomba Clave. Um, it, it's, it's very authentic. So from my standpoint, from the percussionist standpoint, very enjoyable to play a piece that sounds quote-unquote Latin, but, like, is the real deal. Well, and with your, you know, as a, as a member of uh, yeah. Jim Dreyer's Latin groups and, of course, uh, Orquesta Alta Maiz, you yes. play with them a lot. You know, you you. You, you, you know your way around Latin a little. I do, and, and I have told both Jim Dreyer and Ed East that they have kind of ruined it for me because I feel like for a lot of the general public, they can just kind of listen to something, and if they are hearing uh, a bossa nova bass line, but then like a two, you know Montuno piano line, they're like, oh, yeah, it sounds latin and like to me, it just sounds like you know, bagpipes at a, at a, (laughs) at a country band concert or something. It just doesn't work. And it's really difficult for me to hear it. So I'm grateful to them for showing me the ropes on all of that stuff, but then it makes it pretty difficult anytime it's not quote unquote authentic. And, and so Michelle's piece very much. And, and I, uh, and the, the band loves playing that as well. We're also featuring Aaron Piper, who was a young artist runner up and a wonderful trombone player. Aaron Aaron from uh, Marion high school. school. And, uh, Two-time, three-time jazz, jazz all uh, state, jazz all state. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very strong player at, at both jazz and classical. So we're featuring him on the Grand Concerto for Trombone, and he's he's fortunate that his week ended up being the indoor week because one of the things that our our high school students when they play with the band, you know, for the most part, they've never soloed or have done very little soloing in front of a concert band, and then almost never have they had to do it outside with the wind and the humidity and the bugs and whatnot. So he gets the uh, climate controlled uh, benefit of Washington High School Auditorium and, and Ballantyne Auditorium at Kirkwood. Week eight for the municipal band indoors. If you just have uh, not felt like going outside 
uh, to watch the municipal band. Here you have per- two perfect chances to do it inside. And, of course, uh, we should mention, too, that you'll still have the Facebook live stream. Yep, live stream will be up and going. But, yep, 730 for both of those as usual. And if people want to find out more information on the web or online, they can visit you or your website. Yeah, Facebook is probably the best place, the most up-to-date. But like I said... No uh, no cancellation this week, we're hoping, for weather. It would take some pretty bad weather for, for that to happen. But uh, Facebook, in general, best place to go. And then also the website, sierramuniband.org. All right. Thanks, Steve. We'll see you next week one more time. Thanks, Dennis. You can hear The Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1030 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or using your favorite podcast player. Watch our videos on the KCCK Facebook or YouTube channels. Our producer is Lydia Kilgore. I'm Dennis Green. I'll talk to you later.